Hey guys, Ken Ross here and I'm a business consultant that specializes in reducing costs for businesses by looking at their essential expenses and today I'm a little excited today because I want to talk about a topic that you may not have heard of before but it's called hurry sickness. Now what is hurry sickness you may think? Is this a real disease? Can you sound kind of crazy? And maybe I do sound a little crazy but it isn't a real disease and it is something that is a psychological phenomenon. It was originally derived by cardiologists in 1974 and it is something that has been studied over the years and kind of spent some time looking into myself so if, if you're so inclined check the description of this video I have a couple of resources here for you to kind of help you put a little bit more meat to what I'm about to say but what I want to try to describe is what hurry sickness is and what you can do about it because honestly I feel like as busy business owners we're constantly busy doing a lot of things we want to perfect what it is we're trying to do. We want to make the most money or we want to help the most people by being effective leaders and by completing the tasks that we have. But if we get stuck or we get bogged down into this idea that we are going to have to hurry through things, then you could have hurry sickness. So let's talk about it. First thing I want to talk about is kind of what it is, right? And maybe some of the symptoms of this illness, right? Hurry sickness really derives kind of two, two things, and that's anxiety, you know, feeling anxious, that, that, that spot in your, in your stomach or in your heart that's like, man, I gotta get this stuff done, and I'm, 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 a, I'm a little just nervous, like just uneasy. And this idea that we have to hustle through everything, that there is not enough time in the day. Those two components put together, and kind of in this cycle, exacerbate hurry sickness. The next thing I want to talk about are some of the aspects of hurry sickness. Now, before I really get into this list, I want to give you a caveat. Not everything in this list exclusively means you have hurry sickness. Think about this list as an all-inclusive list, and if you have a good number of these symptoms, then you probably have hurry sickness, and it's something we should really want to invest some time in dealing with. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is this idea that everything is a race. Everything Every task, every thing you're trying to do when you get up in the morning, you got to get ready, you got to get out the door. Uh, everything is a race. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't times where you want to hurry and get things done and, and, and you have a time constraint, but you look at it as a competition. You measure yourself on it or you, or you internally process it as I have to win this. I have to get this done as fast as I possibly can. That's what I'm talking about. The next thing I want to bring up is tasks and how you complete them. If you have troubles trying to complete individual tasks without other tasks getting in the way of that, then that may be a sign that you have hurry sickness too. I can give you a good example. Let's say for instance, you're trying to finish a, a very important report of your finances and in the middle of trying to do those finances you are uh, just stressing out about some aspect of your marketing campaign and you go back and forth between these two things and they they they're so intertwined that you can't separate the two and just complete one task and then complete the other that may be a sign that you're bogged down with too many tasks and you're you're in this hurry sickness mentality something you should really be aware of the next thing I want to talk about are delays. Every business, every person, whether it's a business or not, every person experiences a delay in their day in some sense. People have to be willing to be patient uh, and understand that life happens, but delays that equal being so irritable that you're just unable to deal with that irritability, that is a sign of hurry sickness. I do have those moments where I feel like this is just too much for me. I can't, I can't handle another delay on this task or I can't handle another delay to getting, getting through this milestone or reaching this bar. Those types of delays, if that's constant in your, in your life, if that's something that constantly comes up as, hey, even a little delay causes some irritability and puts you in this place of, I have to get this done faster and these delays can't exist, I'm, I'm going to fail if I don't get it done uh, right now, then you may need to look into some of the steps I'm going to give you later in this video on how to deal with hurry sickness. 
Next thing I wanna talk about is being behind schedule. You constantly think, if you're in, hur in hurry sickness mode, that you're behind schedule. That the next thing that leads to the next thing that leads to the next thing are always behind. Something that I don't think I've really experienced myself personally, but I do experience uh, times being behind schedule, not having things uh, well thought out for the day, and being in this mindset of how do I how do I fix my schedule? How do I get it get it figured out so that I can I can get through the rest of my day and get my tasks done? If that is something that is constant in your life, that is always happening, then you may be experiencing hurry sickness as well. Okay, the the next thing is one that I know I definitely don't like. Personally, this is a this is a trigger thing for me. You know how when you're in conversations with people and you're having a great conversation, or or maybe even you're having a great great discussion, a debate back and forth, and the person you're talking to interrupts you mid sentence. Yes, interrupting people is something I absolutely cannot stand as a as a professional. I love to take turns and 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 debate a topic or even have a conversation, but if we can't take turns and you're constantly in a state where you have to interrupt someone in conversation, then you are in a hurry to get the conversation over with to get to the next thing. And that may be hurry sickness. And so not, not to say that I'm going to call everyone out for interrupting me, but I really do feel like a lot of people, that's where they're at. They're so anxious to get something done that they are willing to interrupt you. And that is something, at least I've started to give a lot of people more grace about it and to say, well, maybe they just have some anxiety or maybe they really wanna get this done and I really wanna have the right discussion. I wanna to get to the bottom of what it is that I wanna do. So in, in a lot of those times, I do. I try to show a little bit more grace because, hey, this, this is an important thing for, for people's mental health. Okay, the last thing, and this is one I know I've, I've experienced a lot of people who are in this, especially uh, uh, having worked for three Fortune 500 companies, worked with a lot of different types of managers. Um, it's something I definitely know uh, at the railroad is something that people love to do, and that's checking things off of their to-do list. We used to have lists at the, at the railroad when I worked for them where we would show people our list of to-dos and say, yep, did this this week, did this thing this week, fill it out, put a date on it, write notes, those types of things, they are very good to keep organized and to stay on task. But if you are so obsessed with checking things off on your to-do list and you are constantly looking over these things, obsessing over them, then you may have hurry sickness. It's something that I know for myself as a professional, I, I know that you know staying on task is important. I know that having a good list of things to measure against is important, but you cannot overweigh the importance of that list when it comes to doing the tasks and doing them well, and that not cause a lot of stress and anxiety. Hurry sickness is a real thing. These six things that I mentioned, they're all really important and they're all things that can happen to us or, or have happened to us in our professional careers. But as a business owner, if you have all of these things, you really need to invest in some time in yourself and understanding how to deal with the anxiety and the frustration of this illness. So let's get into that part. Okay, a couple of quick tips here on what it is you can do. And like I said, please check the resources that I have in the description below. Really helps you give more information, uh, really good insight into what this is, what I'm talking about. I really do think as business owners or as, a, as people in general, we live in very interesting times. We live in times where not everything is 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 back to normal not everything is is together so people are really anxious so that anxiety combined with the culture that we have here in the United States or in North America or in the world even I would say that those two things would would put people in more of this category of, I could have hurry sickness because, hey, I just have to get these things done. And we're in so much anxious times with hyperinflation here, right? What do we do? Anyway, here are some tips on how to put together a good strategy to deal with hurry sickness. 
first thing you really want to do is you want to prioritize your tasks, right? So this kind of is one that I know is important to me and I and I constantly stressed it in, in my career in IT. It's what is the top priority because everybody wants everything done right away and everybody wants something done very well, but not everybody wants to be patient and wait the time that it takes to get that stuff done. So they're constantly trying to assert priority, right? Prioritization is very important that you stick to what the higher priority tasks are at the time and that the lower priority tasks can go, I'm not saying unnoticed, just document it and say, hey, look, I gotta leave those for later. So please invest time in prioritizing tasks, knowing when things are due, understanding like, hey, this is important now and this is important later. If we have time, we can do these things. Prioritization is something I think people can invest a little bit more time in and it would make their life a lot easier. The next thing I want to talk about is something I've talked about in a lot in a lot of different ways in on this channel and it, it involves self-care involves getting yourself the proper rest mentally as well as physically emotionally spiritually so that you can take care of yourself self-care is one of those things I think as a business owner or even as people in society today especially given the times that I keep talking about right we don't take enough time to invest in ourselves to make sure we're in a good head space and a good place to actually complete tasks or to be able to focus on the tasks that we're doing so that we can do those things efficiently. So that is something I think would really combat against hurry sickness. If you invest enough time in yourself and what it is that you're trying to do emotionally and be at a, a good place centered there emotionally, then these tasks aren't so overwhelming. The level of anxiety that you have isn't so overwhelming. Your physical fatigue or whatever it is that you're, you're uh, experiencing physically won't get in the way of your mental uh, processing so that you can get things done. It's something I really think a lot of folks should, should invest some time looking into. The next thing is routine. Now, you may think, oh, well, why have a routine, right? <laughs> why always try to be so consistent with certain things? You don't have to have a routine for everything, but you should have a routine for, for some things. Establish a decent bedtime routine. Um, study some good books maybe and, and invest in in reading right at night and say hey look when I go to bed or when I get ready to wind down for the day I'm gonna read five pages of this business journal or these um, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read the Wall Street Journal or I'm gonna do something to invest in myself and kind of center myself around what it is I'm trying to do and then go into the, the, the next day knowing, hey, I completed a day because I finished these routine things that I do at the end, end of the day to know that the next day I'm, I'm centered, I'm in a good spot. Okay, the next thing really kind of has to deal with planning because if you don't have a plan, right, you plan to fail. So you need to plan time to think about your strategy to think about how to tackle the day or even midday, right? Let's say you, you, you don't, you struggle with having a consistent lunch break, for instance, or having consistent breaks for that matter, right? If you could just schedule a consistent time where you're like, at this particular moment in my day, I'm gonna stop for 15 minutes. I'm gonna think about where I'm at. I'm gonna debrief myself or even my staff on where we're at in the day and say, these things are now priority or these things are now more important. If you schedule that, that will do wonders to keep a good routine even if you don't have a good routine if, I, if i'm making any sense the fact that you could schedule time to just think about what it is you're doing what you're trying to accomplish will go a long way in making sure that you can operate your business effectively that you can even just handle yourself for that matter not just your business but yourself in a manner that is very controlled and measured so that you can be effective and get things done. So something I really think a lot of people should spend some time doing. Spend time every day thinking. Okay, the last one, really important, right? Talked about what it takes to, to have hurry sickness and there's something I really haven't addressed in great detail, right? And that's anxiety. If you're so stressed out or you have so much anxiety that it's 
controlling you, that it's physically making you sick, or that's making you ill in a lot of ways, and it keeps your mind so busy that you can no longer process other things, then you have a problem where you need to seek support and professional help. You need to deal with that stress and anxiety that is probably top priority. I know I mentioned this last, but I really think it's very much important. If the anxiety didn't exist, I think the pressure of the tasks and the, and the, and the idea that you have to get so many things done would kind of melt away because you would be able to look at those tasks realistically. You'd be able to prioritize them better. I think anxiety or, or, or an emotional stress puts a lot of toll on people and makes them want to push even harder for something that they can achieve that way. They can, they can achieve it better if they didn't have the anxiety there in the first place. So if you can remove anxiety and stress from your life and you need to seek professional help, it's something I really think people should spend more time investing in. And I, I know, like I said, and I've mentioned this a few times already in this video, that COVID and, and all the things that happen politically or even just things that happen in people's family life or, you know, stresses of, of material things, those things contribute to so much stress and anxiety in people's lives that really affects their performance and what they're trying to do. And I, I can't stress it enough. I know I've experienced that myself in this time. I don't think anyone who's gone through COVID or gone through this global pandemic could, could say, I came away unscathed. I Hurry sickness is something that's real, right? And as, as much as it's just a psychological phenomenon, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, it's psychologically something that we don't fully understand yet. And having a name for it, at least for me, gives me this idea or the sense that I can actually identify it. And now that I can identify it, I can have a strategy to go forward and not have to deal with that anxiety and stress or that stressor in my life, that unknown thing, right, that's really irking me. If I, I hate to, I hate to use the cliche, if I can name it and claim it, right, but, but that's really how I feel. I feel like the fact that I can give it a name helps me understand, okay, I'm, I'm having hurry sickness or maybe I'm having early signs of it that I can go back and say, let me invest some time in just thinking right now. Let me just do this and that will get, that will take that feeling away. That will help the situation dramatically. Okay, guys, that's what I have for today. Thank you for your time and attention to this. A lot of information there I wanted to give you, but really think it's important that we have a great conversation and discussion about it. Please post in the comment section below on what you think about hurry sickness. Is it something that you think you've actually had to deal with and how you've dealt with it in the past? I'd love to have a conversation with you. I'd love to inspire others to raise awareness to this idea or this thought that anxiety along with this stress and uh, aggravation of wanting to get things done could, could lead to such a, a, an illness mentally that can put you in a very bad bad place uh, as a business owner. So please, um, let's let's have a conversation in the com comment section below. And also, if you haven't had a chance, like and share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel and visit my website, IamKenRoss.com. Until I see you next time, I'll see you around.